Well, hello everybody, it's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, we're in this series called Walking in the Holy Spirit. And this is just such an incredibly important topic, how we are led, how we live and how we move in the Holy Spirit, who is the the Lord and the giver of life. Uh, In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, there's a very famous verse of scripture. and And it says this, it says this, 29 verse 13. When you search for me, you will find me if... You seek for me with all your heart. Just circle that word if. When you search for me, you'll find me if you seek me with all your heart. God makes a promise. And the promise is this, is that if you search for me, you will find me. But here's the condition. It's got to be, you've got to be all in. You've got to be all in. Yesterday, I shared with you a little bit about how I encounter the Lord through my life. And, and sometimes it's hard to talk about in the immediate, but when I look back, and, and I shared about the fact that uh, so often in my life, when I have traveled, when I have left home, when I've gone to the expense, when I have given time, when I have uh, gone away and specifically gone with the purpose of, of being with God, seeking God in some manner, that it's in those moments that I experience the Holy Spirit speak very, very powerfully in my life. Uh, and what does it say again? Um, uh, when you search for me, you'll find me if you seek me with all your heart. So going to the expense, the time, the effort, all of it of going away. Now, I appreciate for many people, you can't do that. You have responsibilities that maybe prevent you from doing that. Health, finance, children, you can't. But you can make times in your life when you can stop and you can say to God, God, I'm here and I'm setting aside this amount of time. It could be just a few minutes. It could be a long period of time. And you can just set that time aside for God. And it's amazing how God will come to you. Now, let's have a, let's go to Acts chapter 10. And I'm going to spend a few day, a couple of days here talking about what God is doing here and how the Holy Spirit is at work in Acts chapter 10. Now, this is a really key passage of scripture for me in terms of being led by the Holy Spirit, because our lives are not meant to be lived such that the God is not active, but that God is very active in our life and, and that we're being guided by him in all things. Let's read from John, Acts, sorry, Acts chapter 10, verse 1. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian cohort, as it was called. He was a devout man who feared God with all his household. He gave alms generously to the people and prayed constantly to God. One afternoon about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he clearly saw an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, and he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? He answered, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa for a certain Simon who's called Peter. He's lodging with Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside. And when the angel who spoke to him had left, he called two of his slaves and a devout soldier from the ranks of those who served him. And after telling them everything, he sent them to Joppa. Now, what's going to happen in this story is that they're going to meet Peter. At the same time, God is working in Peter's life. And and then Peter is going to come and he's going to preach to them and the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them. That's the story, right? Uh, But there's so much more in this. So here is Cornelius. He is is someone that is a believer. He is committed and he is seeking after God. And he's seeking after God in two of the critical ways uh, is, is that through prayer and through almsgiving. When, when we want to indicate to God our heart, there are ways we can do that. Sometimes it is to, like for me, when I travel, I'm just about to go to Chicago, I have a sense that God is going to talk to me about the next steps in my life and maybe even the remainder of my life. I have a sense that I'm going to encounter the presence of God very, very strongly because when I look back in my life, it's when I've traveled and made space for God and committed time, finance and prayer that I have found that God has blessed me. Now, why prayer and finances in particular for this reason? 
Prayer says, God, I need you. God and you are the Lord of all. Why finances or how it's called here is almsgiving. The very first commandment says this, is that you shall have no other gods beside me. What did Jesus and St. Paul do in the New Testament? They so often talked about the power of, of possessions, the power of money, the power of status that comes from possessions and money at times. That sometimes, very often, people can put them as being more important about what we have, about how people see us, than even God. And what almsgiving does when we give away, when we give away, what almsgiving does, it says, I will not allow myself to be ruled by anything that I could put before who God is and who Jesus is in my life. And, and we read in the scriptures constantly that almsgiving, the giving away, is, is an indication of our heart to God, I'm allowing you to be central and center of my life. And when you combine that with prayer, what happens is it says to God, you are the most important thing in my life. Nothing will be uh, there. If you, and if you think I'm exaggerating the point, go and read all of the, the 39 <coughs> uh, the, uh, parables that Jesus told. More than half of them are about money and power. Why? because we replace God in our life. So here's, here's Cornelius, he's praying, he is making sure that he's not dominated by material goods, power or money, and he's coming for God and God sees his heart and God comes to him. Now think about what the first verse we read. You know, when you seek me and you seek me with all your heart, I will come to you. And so in a dream, he feels like the, the, the God speaks to him. What? It, how does God come to us? God comes through the Holy Spirit and says, Hey, listen, go to Joppa and get this man named Peter and bring him to you. Now, the reason I, and, and so I'm going to stop now, but uh, stop now, but you have to put all of these pieces together and it's how we walk in the Holy Spirit. But it comes back to that desire I want God. And I want him and I'm seeking after him with all of my heart. And the thing that I found is I used to think, I used to think, well, I'm a believer. And so then I've sought him with all my heart. Now what I've come to realize is that I have to keep seeking after him, seeking after him, seeking after me. Keep making sure that those things that I could replace God with, you know, prestige, power, money, those things that give me things that I go, oh, they're really more important to me and push God out of my life, that the antidote to those things is to give away, is to give away because then you don't allow them to be uh, in your life. Now, different people have different levels of that. The person who God's called to be a billionaire, their level of giving away and, and what they have is one thing to someone who doesn't have much at all, they're giving away and what they have is something. But it really comes down to this, this action of the heart combined with prayer that says, I need you. And it seems to be into that formula that God comes, that God comes. He comes to the person in prayer and he comes to the person who's saying, I won't allow anything to have first place in my life. Loving Father, we just thank you as we go into this story in these next few days. May your Holy Spirit touch us powerfully and may we experience you and, and be challenged by the gospel. And Father, we make this prayer in Jesus' name through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow. And don't forget wherever you are, God's never ever far from you.